Hi guys, imagine if someone came to your home to convince you to join a religion. They told you that it was necessary to leave your family, quit your job, and if you did that, both you, your partner, and your kids would be better off. You wouldn't be poor, you would be rich. You would have a better job and your family would be happier. The people selling you this dream were Boris Johnson, Jacob Rees-Mogg, Nigel Farage, and David Davis. Even though most of these people had a history of lying, you just had to ignore that and believe them. If you believed, things would be wonderful. David Davis before the referendum told people that there were no downsides to Brexit, only considerable upsides. Now he's selling something else. When we were going through the Brexit referendum, I had uh, uh, some builders working on my house. And every, every time I came home on the Friday, they'd say, well, you know, what are you doing, Mr. Davis? It'd be a different group each time. And when George Osborne had made his prediction of a uh, £4,000 per family penalty, right? Um, uh, I drove into my courtyard and the quite clever um, man who ran the building company, pulled himself up by his bootstraps from his background, uh, said to me, Mr. Davis, £4,000 for my freedom, cheap at the price. You know? So it's not all about uh, economy, although that will turn. So get on with it. In. It's going to cost you yeah. more. Get on with it and enjoy your freedom. Uh, well, we, we, should, we should get on with it. We, no, no, I didn't say it's going to cost you more. I said we should get on with it, but it's not the only story. <sighs> How do you respond to this? How do you respond to these charlatans? You know, telling people before the referendum, everything is going to be wonderful. You know, using the analogy from before, David Davis is going to the person who's living on the street now. They, their family have said, we don't want anything to, more to do with you. They can't get their job back because they quit and they gave, the, <laughs> they gave their boss the finger. And now David Davis is going to them and saying, yeah, but, but you have your freedom. Yes, but look at what I have given up. But you have your freedom. I've surrendered everything. You told me things would be better. Yes, but you have your freedom. There you have it. So I, I would love to know how this uh, builder is operating at the moment, if he's happy with the cost of Brexit, you know, material more expensive, more difficult to get access to the workers he needs. But, you know, businesses are struggling because of Brexit. Some businesses have been forced to operate. Some have had to take on extra staff to complete the extra paperwork which is a cost that's been passed on to the, the customer and the, end, and the end user, the consumer. And what have, he, what have we to show for it? Uh, you have your freedom. What the hell does that mean? It's like sovereignty. Define it. What does it actually mean? People had freedom before. Like, how does... Look, it's really difficult to respond to this thing because it's so ridiculous. It's like a cult. How do you rationalise this? And why is David Davis still an MP? Why hasn't he been kicked out of the House of Commons? Who the hell votes for this guy? He lied to people. He told people things would be better. Things are clearly worse. And now he's resorting to, well, we have our freedom. What freedom? Describe that, David. You, charlatans like Boris Johnson, Jacob Rees-Mogg, Nigel Farage, none of these people been, have been held to account. How is it possible that somebody can say everything is going to get better, it's been demonstrated that it has not got better, it's actually got worse, the opposite, and nobody is calling these people out? David Davis should be embarrassed to show his face in public. Never mind go on a podcast. How is this possible? Can you imagine in any other situation in life where you're completely wrong about something, and you don't apologize. You don't say, look, I was, mis I was mistaken and try and make amends. No, you double down. You're proven wrong and you just try to twist and turn and say, well, it's, it's not my fault or it's not the fault of Brexit or it's, you know, it's, uh, or the, they go down the other route and say, I never told people that things would actually get better. People knew that things were going to be difficult. No, you were told, people were told about sunlit uplands. People were told that things would get better, that we could, have be, we could have access to the single market, but not be in the single market, that we could be like Norway, we could be like Switzerland, that they needed us more than we needed them. Was it David Davis who said that the, the trade deals would be, would be flowing in after the UK left the European Union or after the day of the vote? 
that the negotiations would be taking taking place in Bro in Berlin, not in Brussels. That the German car industry would come and and save the UK from any negative impacts of Brexit. That the Italian uh, wine producers, the French cheese producers, would put pressure on their governments. That would, in turn, put pressure on the European Union to do a good deal with Britain. Exceptionalism on steroids. And still, he's invited onto podcasts and he has no shame. Let me know in the comment section, guys, what you think. As always, your comments are greatly appreciated. Thanks a lot.